All right, thanks for watching. And I've been challenged by black pen, red pen to do the integral of x squared dx without the power rule, but with one mark in each hand. And I just like to say challenge accepted. So for this integral, let's use a very clever substitution, namely x equals sine of theta. So this is the first time in my life writing with the right hand. So x equals, oh my god, so sine of theta, and then you can use the, subs the calculate dx, so as if it wasn't bad enough, dx, at least I'm not covering the word, dx is cosine of theta, oh my god, d theta, okay. Well, I can also play basketball with the right hand, if that matters at all. But I just want to say something about this. Yes, it is a valid substitution, but just beware, this only works if x is between minus 1 and 1. So technically, if I gave you the bound 2, 2, 3, you wouldn't quite be able to do that. <laughs> but still, Surprisingly, it gives the correct answer, and then what happens to this integral, then we just get that this becomes the integral of something squared times something. So again, <laughs> it becomes sine of theta. Why are you torturing me like that? Uh, sine squared of theta, cosine of theta. <laughs> Uh, oh my god, d theta. I think also cutting scissors I can do this with my uh, right hand. And then, so then we get sine squared of theta cosine theta, but the nice thing is you can just rewrite this as follows. Okay, let me just check. Okay, this is just integral, look how nice, sine of theta and then sine of theta, oh my god, okay, sine of theta times <laughs> cosine of theta, okay, d theta, That feels like first grade again. And then, uh, but the nice thing is, so sine of theta times cosine theta, you can write this as a half angle thing. So, or I guess one, one is to say half of sine of two theta. So this just becomes the integral, let's see, of sine of theta times one half, okay, not bad. Sine, <laughs> sine of 2 theta. Why are you doing this to me? Okay, sine of 2 theta, d theta. Something like that. All right, but then that becomes 1 half sine of theta, sine of 2 theta, and it turns out you can write this as an addition thing. Let me check on my shirt where it is. Well, it isn't on my shirt, but it's okay, I guess. <laughs> and then what we get, that becomes, let's see, so uh, one half times still the integral of one half, oops, I almost flipped my hand, one half, so cosine of theta plus two theta, so cosine of, sorry, cosine of theta minus two theta, so cosine of minus theta, and again, to emphasize, just to make this clear, that is theta minus <laughs> two theta. <laughs> Doesn't that look like a sine wave almost? And then minus cosine, okay, as if this wasn't bad enough. So theta plus <laughs> two theta. Okay, good. And that is cosine of three 
later. I don't know how right-handed people survive, but somehow they do. And then again, d theta. So just to emphasize here, I use that uh, sine of alpha times sine of beta. One nice sine of alpha and sine of beta becomes cosine of, I think, alpha minus beta minus cosine of alpha plus beta. Not bad. Okay, and then the nice thing is, so, uh, you know, cosine of minus theta, that's the same thing as cosine of theta. And then what you just do, you just integrate this. So you do get, I believe, this one quarter, if I'm not mistaken, one quarter and then in times, sorry. Now, antiderivative of cosine, that is sine. So sine of theta. And then here we want to say minus sine of 3 theta. However, remember you have to use the reverse Chen Lu because if you integrate this, you have this one third that pops out again. <laughs> I think it looks more elegant on this channel, but uh, then what we get is one quarter. So let's see, I'm not sure if he substitutes this here. Yeah, so you get one quarter sine of theta, but remember sine of theta, that's just x. So this is one quarter x. Almost. No. Ah, okay, <laughs> one quarter x and then minus one twelve. So minus 112, again, insert sum of integer strokes, blah, blah, blah. And you get sine of 3 theta, but now I would like to remind you there is this nice uh, formula for sine of 3 theta. And in fact, if you think about this, let's cheat a little bit and try to guess it. Well, we want to cancel out this 4x. So this sine of 3 theta, that should probably be 3. Okay, sine cubed of theta. Okay. And then probably because we want, you know, a one third x cubed, so no. Mm -hmm. My bad. It should be three sine of theta to cancel out with this x, and then plus, I believe, four sine cubed of theta. I know, so intense. <laughs> Let me just check and then uh, I hope it, no, minus, okay, almost. There we go. There we go. So again, I don't have this cool shirt to compare, but yeah, we get minus uh, 3 sine of theta minus 4 sine cubed of theta. And then if you plug that in, so it would be 1 half minus 1 12th, and then 3 sine of theta, that is 3x, 3x, and then minus 4 sine cubed of x, so x, well, I guess, uh, x cubed. All right, and then we can simplify this hopefully a little bit. So this becomes 1 fourth x okay. plus, again, in this case, 1 fourth x, and then plus, so minus 1 twelfth plus mi times minus 1 fourth, that is 1 third, 1 third x cubed. And then the beautiful result of the day, this cancels out, and then we're just left with one third x cubed plus a constant. And again, I do want to emphasize this method works uh, coincidentally, because technically we need x to be between minus one and one, but surprisingly it gives us the same result. I wonder if maybe this has to do with the complex numbers where sine of z is in fact unbounded, where z is a complex number. Maybe, but I don't know. 
All right, I hope you like this little left-handed, right-handed extravaganza. If you like this and want to see more math, please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much.